Right, so welcome back to another Bitwig video. And on this one, we are going to take a look at the convolution reverb. So what is the difference between algorithmic and, uh, you know, convolution? Is one better than the other one? Nope, they give you different results. Uh, algorithmic is a mathematical simulated reverb. It can sound close to real, but, you know, it's a simulation of, uh, an, of an ambience. You know, maybe a room, a hall, or something like that. And it sounds a little bit different than convolution. And it's because, you know, it's just a different thing. So convolution is a snapshot of something called impulse response or IR which is, you know, a, a web or a sample, pretty much. But the sample was taken from a real place. Now, the sample contains the nature and information of this real place, and you can load it uh, into a convolution reverb and uh, get a simulation of that, of that very specific place. So that's the main difference between algorithmic and reverb. It's not that, you know, and convolution. It's not that, just, you know, one is better than the other one. It's just different. So with the convolution, since you can get snapshots of a very unique different places, you can get very unique reverb, reverb uh, types. Because you have a million different uh, impulse responses from uh, places, rooms, studios, churches, and, you know, stadiums, whatever, you, you name it. Okay, so let's just take a look at the convolution. I'm going to throw a fresh instance of the convolution, and I'm using Superior Drummer, so we are going to be doing some... Drumming, right? So I'm going to be using right there. So whenever you go to the uh, convolution reverb, the first thing you need to do is to choose your IR, right? To choose whatever sample you want to use. So this is going to be the folder that you have right here. And as soon as you open, it's going to give you a bunch of options uh, of, you know, different places. And you have real rooms, like I told you before, you can take snapshot, snapshots of real rooms, springs, uh, halls, and, and plates, and again, you name it. Still, I'm going to be using the this one, the default one that you get it, that you get when you throw the plugin. So first, before we can go to this section, we need to uh, discard this section. So you get your width, your width gain, and your mix. Now, why do you get a uh, wet gain? So if you play it, right, this is some drums going through the reverb. Pretty understandable. So if I go up on the wet gain, it's going to get louder. Now, when you go through a convolution, the process signal, you know, that goes through the convolution is going to down in gain by default. So if I do mix all the way up and the mix was, you know, by default, it's going to be way down. It doesn't matter that you just do mix. It's going to stay way down in volume and gain. So you can go up in gain to make it a little bit more noticeable. And then you just make the adjustment between the mix and whatever is that, you know, you want to do. But sometimes, depending on the IR that you load, it's going to be a little bit too quiet or not. So you get the option to boost it or just to go down in gain. Right? That's why you why you get to get gain, the, the wet gain. Now your mix control again is going to blend the dry signal with your convoluted signal. Pretty understandable. Now then you have your width control. Now the width it's your width. By default, it's going to be standing on 100%, which is going to be full stereo. Now, if you go over 100%, it's going to add a little bit, a little bit of spread to the signal, so it's going to sound wider. And if you go all the way down, it's going to be mono, just a mono. And if I go, you know, up, we have a mono reverb, which is sometimes, which is, you know, very useful. Sometimes you don't need to use super wide reverbs the whole time on your mix. So, okay, so these are the most common controls, the wet gain and the mix. Now we need to talk about the other controls that we have right here. So you have your tune, your bright and your pre-delay. So first we need to talk about the tune. Now this one, what we are doing right here, we are loading an IR and uh, an impulse response is just a sample. It's just a sample. So you can pitch it up or down and this will affect the original pitch of the IR and it will give you a different sound, different, re different result. So if I play it and go up in the mix so we can just, you know, hear whatever we are doing right here. I go up in the tune it's just very different. If I go down, it's gonna sound way low. And if I do a little bit of mix and go up in the gain, it's really noticeable. Right? So this depends on what you want to do. You want to change the tune, maybe adjust it. You don't need to do it the whole time, but sometimes you get a better blend by just, you know, adjusting the tune. It's completely up to you. 
Now, the other thing that you get is going to be the Bright. Now, this is a, is a Tilt EQ. And what happens when you use the Tilt EQ is that you can boost the lows, but when you do so, it's gonna lower the highs. And when you boost the highs, it's gonna lower the lows. So if I go to the right side, it's gonna boost the highs, but you lose low, low, low end. Right, if I go to the other side, I'm gonna be boosting the lows. We get a lot of lows and less of the highs. This is how a Tilt EQ works. And it, this is just that, a Tilt EQ. So what is the other thing? Well, it's a pre-delay. This is a very standard control that you get on pretty much everything. So what you can do, you can add a little bit of pre-delay so the signal will be delayed, you know, the reverb. Uh, it will be delayed when the signal reaches the, you know, the, the, the convolution river. So again, just a pretty standard control. I feel like I, I just don't need to explain it. And if you go to help, right there, it's just gonna tell you time before the incoming signal reaches the convolution. Pretty understandable. Right, so, so far, it's just a pretty good all common all around convolution. You get your wane, you get gain, you get your mix, your width, uh, you know, just pretty simple, uh, pretty simple device. Now, the piece of resistance of this plugging is going to be the range right here, the time range and the envelope that we get at the bottom. Right, so I'm gonna be playing again. I'm gonna do more mix so we can hear what we are doing. So right here, it says S and it says E. So it's start and it's end. So you have a, a life cycle for, for, the, uh, for, the, con the, for the IR, you know? So what you can do, you can adjust the end of this and make it shorter. So now it's gonna be shorter. Now, if I go to extremes and make it super short, you can really notice it. Now we can do the opposite. Maybe have uh, just the start and just use the tail. And this way again will give you just a different result. That is how it sounds. Pretty dull, right? Maybe I'm gonna be using it right here and just adjusting this. So it depends on the sample. Sometimes this is just gonna give you a good result. Sometimes it will not. Now, the thing, the power with this uh, with this tool, let me just turn it off for now. The main power with the uh, start and the end is the envelopes that you have right here. Now, if I go to the envelopes, it's gonna show you something like that. So you have your start, then you have your middle right here, your, your mid, uh, let's say, your mid level, and then you have the end. So this one is an envelope and you can adjust whatever is that you're using and it will adjust the levels for your, conv your convolution, for your IR. So this is going to shape the sound. If I play it and notice I'm all the way on the mix, so we can just, we are just getting the convoluted sound. So maybe it's just too long, right? It's just too long and I don't want this. Just too long. So I can go down and just adjust the length of the convolution. And when you do so, it's going to show you what you're doing, what you're trimming. So now it's just much shorter. Maybe this one is just too quiet. I want to make it loud. It's gonna be loud. And maybe I can go down or just, you know, make it shorter again. All right, so it's a pretty wonderful thing. Now I'm gonna go back to defaults for now. Just go back to defaults. So the, the uh, envelope, this one, works with the start and end. So it means that maybe I can do maybe something like this and something like this. And we are gonna be working when we go to the envelopes with this section of the start and end. So if I go there, it is that we get that. And right here, we can do whatever the F we want. I can just boost this initial part, go down in the mid, and then just, you know, maybe go up on the tail. And we get something very, you know, different. Maybe I want to go down, and we have something, you know, mild. And just like this, you just can do whatever you want with the IR. It's just fantastic. You can even go crazy. Maybe trim the start and go up in the on the mids. Maybe I'm gonna go do something like that. And it's gonna sound weird. <laughs> and you can even use it as a, you know, a sound effects. Maybe chop it to go through a sampler. Just chop it and get different things, right? So it's a really powerful device. Okay, so uh, again, if you want to adjust the start and the end, you don't see it right here, but you can go over there and just make the adjustment and go back to the original sample. 
So when you click the device, you will have more options, but these options are pretty much the same things we are controlling right here, right? So I can go up on the volume and just kind of uh, off offset the start, and we can just, you know, bring the end down. But the only thing is that we are doing it uh, with the values right here, and we can see the values right here. It's just gonna be, you know, we cannot really see it. It's right here at the bottom, but it's just not very precise in terms of the start and the end. You can do it from here. Same thing with the envelopes. If I go to the envelope, instead of doing it here, we can go right there and just do it from here, right? It's just completely the same. So pretty understandable, easy to use. Now, then we have another option, which is going to be the reduce to stereo. Now, some IRs will be multi-channel. Now, uh, this one is going to be a four channel. How do you know? It's because it says right here at the bottom. Now, usually, uh, Usually uh, it's going to be one channel or two channels and that's going to be, you know, stereo. This one is just a little bit wider, you know, just you have more channels. And the thing is that sometimes when you use this for channel in this case, it's going to take more memory. It's just going to take a little bit more. So what you can do is you can take this four channel and reduce it to stereo, which is going to be a two channel. If I load a different impulse response, I'm going to, I don't know, I'm going to just go to this one. Uh, maybe not that one. Yeah, this one. No, this one. Uh, notice that this one is a two channel right here. We get two. And if I click OK, uh, we don't have this option naval, you know, it's grayed out and it was checked from before, but we cannot check it or uncheck it because it's already two channels. And the benefit from this is that you will consume a lot less memory because this is just like using two instances of the convolution. Right, so this is the convolution and uh, you get a lot of uh, a lot of sounds, a lot of samples from the factory that are really, really usable, really cool. And then you can use the envelope and do whatever the F you want. Now, maybe you're asking, you're wondering, uh, can we load our own samples? Yes, you can. When you open right here, you get right here at the bottom, import. So you need to click on the import in this case, and you have a very specific place where you can toss this out. But uh, right, right now, you can go and do it through the import. So when I go to import, it's going to take you to the computer and you just need to find the folder where your IRs are going to be. OK, so right here on my computer, I, I'm going to try to e to load this uh, this uh, library. Now, this one is called Echo Thief. Uh, if you go to the web, Echo Thief has a lot of, um, you know, a lot of downloads. Uh, you can download a lot of impulse responses. Let me show you uh, right here. You have, you know, a lot. So what you need to do in this case, I'm going to I'm going to be loading the whole damn thing. I'm going to select that folder. It's going to take a little while because it needs to, you know, recognize it and load it. Once it's done, it's going to take a little while, depending on how uh, how many impulse responses you're just trying to import. But then at the end of the day, you're going to get them right here. You know, I get it right here. Uh, this one is from the Echo Thief. Uh, then you have miscellaneous. So you can just import whatever you want and then just use it. I'm going to use, I don't know, this one. Just going to select that one and it's going to it's going to sound weird. So I'm going to go down on the wet gain and see what we get, because sometimes it's just a little bit too loud. I'm going to be playing this. And I'm going to go up and see what we get. All right. This is pretty long. I'm going to go down to the pre-delay. And then you just choose whatever impulse responds and you just start playing with this. Maybe I want to make it shorter. All right. Now, if you go to the web, you have a million places where you can download impulse responses. And if you're thinking, oh, OK, you know what? I'm going to use the waves one, the ones uh, that they give you with the with the waves account uh, with that plugin, where the uh, the convolution plugin for waves. Well, those ones are I guess uh, they are uh, different impulse responses. They have a they have a different format. So at the end of the day, they are samples. But uh, the impulse responses that you need to load are WAV or dot WAV. But that's it. A pretty small tutorial for a cool device that we've been asking uh, uh, for to be to Bitwick uh, for years, for years for a convolution. Now we get it, and it's really cool, right? So see you on the next one.